This is Richard Deitch with my colleague Brian Kazanub. We are at the Sochi Media Center. And Brian, let's talk about some of the major storylines here in Sochi. I think we both agree that security has to be number one. Uh, unfortunately, we'd love to talk about the competition first and foremost, but given the fortress that we've seen around the venues, including this one, including the actual competition venues, including the hotels, these games have a very different feel to them, not like anything that I've ever seen before. This is Olympics number 15 for me. Given the threats that have been made, given the things that have happened around these games, I don't think there's any question that if they come off without incident, they will be considered a successful games by that measure. I think that's true. I think obviously, you know, the competition will come and we will start focusing on that. But I think the measure of these games, especially for Vladimir Putin, is safety. If the games are safe, I think the games will be considered a success regardless of the cost, regardless of all the storylines that have been part of the run-up. There's going to be great competition in these games. To me, I think the biggest storyline is men's hockey. We were both in Vancouver. We know what kind of pressure the Canadians were under to win the gold, but we've talked about this too. I think the Russians are under bigger pressure than even the Canadians to win gold here. I honestly think if they didn't win gold in any other event in Sochi, but they won the men's hockey gold, they would consider that a success. It is bigger than anything else here for the hosts. This is a team that has Alex Ovechkin, Evgeny Malkin, Pavel Datsuk, familiar names to NHL fans. And if they don't win here, it'll be considered a sports failure regardless of what else their athletes do. What falls behind the the Russians' attempt to win men's hockey? You know, there's a historic uh, happening here. Ole Einar Bjorndalen, and if you say that fast, you might end up hurting yourself. Right. But he's a great athlete, a biathlete who has won 11 Olympic medals in his career. He's 40 years old. The all-time record for medals at a Winter Olympics in a career is 12. I know who it is. And it sounds a lot like Ole Bjorn Dolly, Bjorn Dolly, Bjorn Dolly which is Norwich. not Ole Einar Bjorn Dolly. And if you say them both fast, he only needs two to break it. He has a very good chance. All right, let's finish up with this. You are going to be covering figure skating for Sports Illustrated, and there are a lot of storylines there. Whether you want to talk about the team competition, the first time we're going to see that, that's really interesting. Before individual singles, before the dance, before the pairs, what are some of the big storylines that you're going to be watching for? It has both an athletic component of being something we're seeing for the first time, a chance for a lot of good athletes who may not get onto individual podiums to get there as part of the team. I would say the U.S., Canada, and Russia are the three teams that will probably end up on the podium. But also, let's face it, this is a moneymaker for the IOC. If they can add events that they know will draw in TV ratings, right. it also brings in revenue. If it works, if it draws good coverage and good response from people, expect it to be the kickoff event of subsequent Olympics in future years.